You have to be prepared for rejection. You have to look at rejection as being part of the creative process. You can't look at it, at it as a roadblock. You have to work with it. Welcome everyone to L- The Late Night with Splice. Where he- <laughs> My name is, I'll, I'll be your host. My name is Ken. I do content and community marketing at Splice. So I, ru- I help oversee our socials and editorials channel. And I'd like to introduce everyone to Kara. Hi guys. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. So Kara has released two of the most popular vocal packs on Splice. She recently signed a publishing deal with Ultra, and her tracks have been sampled by the likes of David Guetta and even heard recently in a Kellogg's commercial. Oh, yeah, all over the place. I'll be watching TV, and I'll hear my voice and be like, did I sign off on that record? <laughs> <laughs> just realizing that it's just my samples. But it's it's incredible. I've, I've heard my samples uh, uh Big, the EDC, biggest festival in the world, and it, it's, it's insane how far these packs have gone. Really. Absolutely. <laughs> so, def- so take us back to when, the time before you put out this pack. Yeah. <laughs> and I know we had discussed this a little bit before. Yes. So you don't have to go too far back. We don't yeah, have to yeah. know, like, your astrological sign or anything. <laughs> <Totally. laughs> but tell us about, like, the starts of your career up until that point. Yeah. Well, um, just like anybody else, you know, my parents were supportive of my music career, but also wanted me to go get an education. So I went to Nashville, I went to Belmont University, and um, honestly, like probably four of the worst years of my life, I'm just not, (laughs) I'm not an education, like I'm not a school person, I'm not a, a, you know, a textbook girl, so... (laughs) Kind of being in the classroom was a little bit torturous for me, and I didn't feel like I was getting that uh, that real life experience that I really wanted until maybe my senior year of college. And they had a program called Belmont West, so I was able to do my last semester in LA. That's when I started interning for a company called AM Only, which is now Paradigm, just to get into the EDM world because I knew cool. that's where I wanted to focus. For me, I knew that I wanted to be an artist of some sort, but I knew I wasn't going to get signed by a major label. It just wasn't realistic. So I took the approach of EDM top lining to kind of (laughs) crawl my way into it. So um, that's when I met my manager a few months into being in LA, and we just kind of hit the ball running. Uh Was doing sessions every single day in my life. Uh, I mean, I've been here for about five years now, and I've done at least four or five sessions a week, Um, have recorded hundreds of songs, you know, mostly that will never see the light of day. But um, at that time, I was hustling. I was was a manager at Jersey Mike's (laughs) while I made my packs. Um, And I can, I'm just like getting emotional thinking about it because I would literally like, open up the store at like seven in the morning and and rush over to the studio to record these sample packs, knowing not not knowing how big that they were gonna blow up or anything. I just knew that, you know, even with a couple of the cuts that I did have under my belt, like Seven Lions and, you know, a few a few really big DJs, um, you know, I wasn't really making money. Right. <laughs> so I still was working a part time job three to four days a week while I was making these packs, and then everything kind of shifted in my life as soon as, you know, the Splice stuff started happening for me. So take us back to Jersey Mike's. Yeah. You're, you're, okay. you're, you're, I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> we can, Please. <laughs> we'll go back, for, we'll, we'll jump back, and then we're going to come right back okay, to now. Okay, okay, okay. Just in the sense of, like, that's a point where a lot of artists feel like mm-hmm. they're not sure where to go from there. Yeah. They feel like... This is this might be it for me. Yeah. So what's going through your head? Yeah. Uh, it's it's before you've put out the packs. You're not. Yeah. In, you possibly. I mean, I'm sure you knew that they were going to be they were going to be great, but yeah. maybe not predicting that they would be as successful as they became. Right. So bring us back to that time. Yeah. What was going through your head? Well, here's the thing. I I always knew what I was capable of, and that's right. so frustrating when you know how talented you are and you know what you can do with your life, and nobody else sees that. You're literally slicing 
me, I'm a vegan now. So like I'm thinking about, I'm like, Ugh. we really but don't want to go back. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but knowing that you're literally making sandwiches for people and having that, like that drive, that talent, that hunger, and nobody else knows that you are capable of such amazing art. Right. Was so was really honestly like the driving force behind everything. Um, more so to like prove to myself that I was capable of greatness, and I always knew that. I just didn't know how I was going to go and do it. And honestly, my life has kind of panned out in a much grander way than I ever could have thought. And. For me, like working those part-time jobs, doing those random um, vocal gigs just to get a hundred dollars um, here and there, that was those were the moments that really, like, were the building blocks to, you know, the momentum that I was building to get to where I am today. Gotcha. Yeah. So, who did you feel like Kara was back then, as compared to now? Oh, a mess. A mess. Um, I. I really, I mean, I think a lot of people don't realize like how how lost I was because I feel like I'm I put across a very well put together, very intellectual person, and um, I was I was very much an emotional wreck. Um, you know, when you're dealing with rejection every day, dealing with frustrating sessions, or you know trying to negotiate deals where you feel like you're getting kind of the short end of the stick, which most top liners do, um, it's, it all builds up. And unfortunately, and fortunately for my manager, that I have to un I've unleashed a lot of that frustration onto him. And he always says these few things, like, think of the bigger picture. Like, is it worth, like, crying about? Is it worth, like, getting upset over? Like, just, just keep pushing, stay encouraged. So that's the important thing. Like, you cannot, you cannot let a little bit of rejection or negativity or frustration, like, steer you off your course if you are 100% passionate and sure that this is what you want to do with your life. Of course. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers to that. <laughs> so. On that note, one of the things uh, I wanted to bring up with you is it does feel like in this day and age, especially like online, yeah. it's always like a putting your best foot forward. People always want to convey this image mm -hmm. of success at all times. They do yeah. say that like yeah. being successful, half of it's conveying an image of success. Yeah. And obviously after the pack and you've been doing so much. But one of the things I really admire about how you carry yourself online mm -hmm. is that you really go into detail about the more realities yeah. of the music industry. Absolutely. Which oftentimes I feel like a lot of people shy away from. So if, if you could speak to that. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen, she has a hashtag that's advice by Kara. Mm -hmm. And it kind of goes into these like, Every, like so many aspects of yeah, being everything. an artist. So if you could speak yeah. to that and just talk about like yeah, being open about those things online. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, to start, I was just talking about this with um, the creator of Splice. When I did my first pack, I didn't have very many followers. I probably had like 5,000 followers on Instagram. Now I'm up to 15,000, all natural organic growth. And it's really because I started those advice by Kara posts. And I talk about people want substance when you're looking at, or at least for me, I knew that I wanted to look at people with substance online. Like, I, I just think a lot of the content out there nowadays is just complete garbage. And so I wanted to offer something that was genuine and real and helpful to people. Because like you said, like, a lot of people want to put off this like front that everything's great, everything's going well, I have a lot of money. Like, it's not that at all. Nice. Like, when you're working in music, like, there are so many ups and downs and sideways. Like, you don't know what you're going to get that day. You don't know when your next check is coming. Like that's that's real stuff. And it's important for me to help people realize that if you want to be successful, it, I, first of all, any of my advice posts can be related to any career. I focus on music, but a lot of my posts are health oriented because everything stems from a healthy mind, a healthy body, a healthy soul. 
And when I started focusing on my health, when I went vegan, when I lost 20 pounds, when I started meditating, doing yoga, that's when all of my stuff, my everything started to click. My whole life started to click. And that's why I focus so, so much on those like, like help, like, you know. Of course. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just like focusing on your, your mental health, your physical health. You, when you're in music, you, you know that you're going to be sitting in a studio for, you know, a majority of your life. You need to get outside. You need yeah. to go do something. Like, that, it all is, is correlated with each other. And so a lot of people have been, re, you know, reaching out because I've been posting, you know, all of the down and dirty, like, secrets of the industry. And you, I can't keep tra- I cannot keep up with the amount of messages I get. Wow. Because there's just so, there's just like a pouring of people like, wow, thank you for sharing that. Asking more questions about it. How to negotiate deals. Nobody taught me that shit, like stuff. Really? You know, like you can't learn that in a classroom. And so I learned from experience. I made a lot of mistakes. Me and my manager have paid for a lot of mistakes. But it was all for a reason so that, one, I can, you know, teach other people and and feel good about teaching good information and lessons because I want to be a good influence. I want to be a good role, mo- role model to people. Of course. What kind of so? Can you give me any examples of those types of conversations you've had? I mean, I'm sure they're so numerous, but I'm very like interested. Yeah, in the types yeah. Of people like um, like from people messaging me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I get a lot of top liners. I yeah. and I get a lot of like up and coming DJs asking how to you know, go about getting top lines and, and, and working with people and um, a lot, a lot health-based stuff. And I do my best to answer all of those questions. And if there's something that, you know, I can't go into too much detail about it, I'll do a video on it the next week or something like that. But it's, it's pretty, you know, pretty normal questions back and forth. And I really, I, I give, I, take a lot of pride in in spending that time every day to to reach out to those people because one they're following me for a reason like I have to like give them something back and I want them to be connected to me in a much deeper way because those are the people that are going to stay with me for a lifetime not just because I did a random song with a random DJ that they like you know I want to have more of a connection there so you had talked about like healthy, like having a healthy mind, having a healthy body. So what, mm-hmm. what, what, what was the point, I guess, at which you started to like consider that that was as important to pursuing your art? Well, when I found myself crying every single day in my life because I was frustrated with not being self-sufficient and not liking the way I looked and not feeling good and um, I was just, I just like hit my breaking point and my boyfriend, um, Reed Stefan, who is also really involved in the production world with his YouTube, YouTube. channel. Yeah. Um, We're big he, fans. yeah, he, um, he was really the reason why I took that seriously. It was a lot of lectures. It was a lot of like, you know, getting down and dirty and like, like fixing those inner wounds that I never wanted to face. But as soon as I started on like peeling those layers and, and realizing like, oh wait, okay, so I just unlocked this level of life. And then it was like, okay, wow, I did not know I could do that. I unlocked that level of life. And it just like keeps getting better and better. I'm like, okay, like what else can happen to my life to make it better? Like I can't even think of one. Do so you, it's so- like, I, I, that's, that's why I'm so adamant about people getting that 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 help or that you know drive to you know get themselves healthy and happy of course yeah. and it's so important to i really admire the fact that you are having these conversations online yeah because it does feel like a topic that especially mental health and creative types it's like yeah. it's really a conversation we need to be having yeah absolutely i hate that stigma that you have to be a tormented artist to make art like that is couldn't be the more opposite of what i have been living in my life and uh, there, like, 
Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> there was like this really popular tweet. Uh, we, we talked about we, we it. We talked about um, this, yeah. About like, you know, five things that producers will never have. And it was like good mental health, like a physically fit body, a healthy relationship, da, da, da. And I was like, that couldn't be farther far, farther from the truth. Like I have the most amazing relationship. Who's a, he's a producer. He sits in front of that computer all day long while we work together. And we have like such a good energy and like synergy while we work that all stems from health and meditation and, and nature, all of that. Right. And there's like the tortured artist kind yeah. of stereotype ultimately yeah, is, is an unhealthy one, especially like, yeah. Yeah. especially ignoring the actual kinds of like hardships that would maybe cause that a lot of them stemming yeah. from like financial hardships, trying yeah. to support yourself as an artist. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's one thing that my household, like we, the two of us, first of all, we're just like natural born, like hustlers. Like we just work really hard. And you have to, if you right. really want to make, like we're, we want to build an empire. So if, when you're trying, when you're thinking on those terms, you have to think of other ways to make money. You cannot rely on, on writing songs every day. And like, cause, cause even the biggest producers in the world, like don't know when they're going to get their next cut. So, so relying on music is just not. Uh, a self-sufficient way of living when you're in the music industry. Right. Yeah. So as now on that note, yeah. you're creating this sample pack. Yes. You're not expect, you still at this point, not sure what's going to, yeah. what's going to happen. So can you take us through, I guess, yeah. like when you were making that, what was going through your head? Totally. I mean, first off at the time, I didn't even know how to vocal produce. So I did these packs with my other vocal producer, Matthew Steeper. And you know, we we worked really hard on making these these packs what they were. Um, during the time of the second pack, that's when I started learning to vocal produce myself. And in like a year's time span, I'm like getting like hired to produce some of the biggest artists like in EDM right now. Amazing. And and that just goes to show like how much can change and if you really focus on something and you're really serious about it and how quickly it can happen. So when I was making those packs, um, I, I thought it was just going to be like a cool little like side gig thing. I don't know. Sure. I yeah. like, I thought I was going to get like a, I don't know, a couple of thousand bucks like and, and whatever. And it, and it turned into like actual like living off of this money type of money. And like, that's, that was something that I never thought was possible in music. I thought I was gonna have to be doing part-time work for for years down the road. And like and Splice is really the reason why I was able to get out of that hamster wheel. Because that's what a lot of people are stuck in when they're in music. And and Splice is just one example of that. Like there's so nice. many other avenues you can go, you can you can do anything, you can be a session vocalist, you can learn how to vocal produce and just just produce for people that need vocals and like they're like you have to be smart to like to like really like navigate this industry and you and have hustle. to be innovative and you have to be unique about it. So yeah, so Splice was just one of those things that in the back of my mind I was like, I'm really gonna like like build something off of this. But I didn't know how quickly it was gonna happen. Right. Yeah. So talk to us maybe about like it's out and you start to hear it out in the wild. <laughs> in the wild. <laughs> Literally EDC wild. Um, Literally the wild. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, it's, it's crazy because like the first thing that I, I don't know, one of the first things that I got was like a text from my friend and was like, is that you on the David Guetta album? I was like, I didn't do a song with David Guetta. <laughs> and yeah, it was me. And um, I actually heard like heard that same sample at uh, Miami Music Week, and I started getting you know Audien like hit me up. He was like surprised, and then he had a release that day. It was my vocal on it, and like wow. it's like it's helping me. It's helping me connect to people that I typically wouldn't have originally, and I think it's giving it like it's really cool to hear my stuff out. 
but it's more so satisfying to me knowing that like people are like using it for a reason and like it's helpful to them. Of course. Because for, for that was my biggest concern was okay, there's really not too many useful vocals out there for people who don't have access to that. So like how can I like give something to someone and help them learn how to vote like produce with a like a well thought out vocal or like I'm like literally giving somebody an experience with a song like a real songwriter in their bedroom. Right. That's priceless to me. And how did producing like a sample pack I guess like it, it in terms of like your creative process how did it differ from maybe like writing a top line or writing a writing a song for yourself like what kind of like I mean, yeah. it didn't, like, it didn't, it's not too much different. I think the one thing for me was that I actually was able to put, like, less thought into it in a way because um, it was more so just, like, lyrics that were kind of simple and, and easy and, you know, melodies I can, you know, knock those out, you know, all day long. So for us, it was just really exciting and, and fun to to kind of do something different, first of all. It was, it was nice to get a break from the normal, okay, let's write a song on this track kind of thing. Like, it was different. It was something different and fun and, like, adventurous for us. So, um, so we kind of went down that route, just laid a bunch of stuff down, and then we kind of honed in on some, like, things. Okay, like, what would what do people need? What do they want? What kind of vocals do they like know me from and kind of just expanded on that and did like, you know, experimented with different like tracks for things. Like I recorded some, most of the samples on unreleased tracks. So, and then pulled from those and did different, did every single key, every tempo. And it was fun. It was like, it was just like a more of a lighthearted kind of like, like spurt, like, spurt of idea, like just a never ending flow of ideas instead of having to think like too hard about it. Right. So yeah. then the pack is out. You're hearing it across. Um, you're hearing it across so many stages. So many mm -hmm. different producers are using it. And you had mentioned that now when you go into sessions, it's yeah. like a, it, it's kind of like there's like a familiarity oh, with your yeah. work already. Which is so important. So if I'm walking into a session, I was literally, I don't know if you're familiar with Rock Mafia, but they're a husband and wife team who have like plaques like like they're massive and I, I was lucky enough to to work with them um, for a few days and Tim was like I see you once place <laughs> I'm like yeah you do <laughs> like that's awesome <laughs> like you're a Grammy winning like like monster of a producer and you're telling me that you're that you see me and like that is so important like even just them seeing my face my name they, like you said, it's like a familiarity thing. And then it's like, oh, like she's on the charts on, on something. And that's like, she, like her, like she's valuable in some capacity and, and they trust my judgment. They trust my ideas. I like, I cannot even tell you how many, so, like I, I, every session I go in, they're like, I use your, your, your samples or whatever. And like, your pack was amazing. Uh, thank you so much for making that. And I'm like, thank you for using it and, rec and, and, and telling me. And, yeah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I, was, I was telling her before, uh, vocal chant, bottom dash, BP, <laughs> and uh, B flat minor, yeah. uh, 150 has been on every you, song I've ever not, made. You're like, <laughs> so. no, it weren't. For, that's so funny. I know, I've heard a few. <laughs> and then I'm like, and then I get like self-conscious. I'm like, oh my God, are people going to get sick of me? Like, uh, I didn't want that to happen, but I don't think so. Like, I don't think that like to. It's versatile. You know, it's, exactly. Yeah. And, and it's just something where. One of my biggest goals was to be the voice of like EDM, and it's it's kind of happening like really in, in a much different way than I thought, but in a really cool way. And what were what? How did that compare to maybe how sessions were beforehand? Did you like? Were you noticing like a big like tangible difference in the types of people yeah, you were working with? Or? Totally. Yeah. I mean, I instead of like wanting to be one of them, I am one of them now. Amazing. And so to me, like that is everything because yeah. one perception is everything the way people like look at you treat you talk to you like it, it all shifts like dramatically and and I'm not 
I'm not desperate. I'm not coming from a desperate energy anymore. I'm coming from a confident energy, a, a more like sure of myself kind of place. And that's what people want to like work with. Of course. Like the people that are really doing it, that's what they want. They don't want the, you know, like str like anxiety ridden, like up and coming songwriter that, you know, hasn't had experience in, in the sessions. And, and I'm so thankful for having the, that many years to have that experience because all of those really like not so great sessions and, and whatever songs, it all like served its purpose, so. And you had said that the was it was the first pack that was like you were still working with uh, like a vocal producer. And oh yeah. Was, it was the second pack that you did yourself, or no? I so I did both of those with another producer because uh -huh. at that time I literally wasn't vocal producing. I didn't know how, right. and I was scared to do it. And um, I'm excited to do you know more packs because now I can do it, <laughs> and it's it's like a it's it's even extra like like gratifying, like it's just a good feeling to be able to be a female and to to have those skills and know that you are inspiring other females to do that. Of course. Because there's just so few. Right. Yeah. Um, and I actually, so with the, we did a video about <laughs> vocal production. Um, if you guys saw, it was about vocal synth. And I, yes. I did want to, I did want to talk about that, like, they were like, YouTubers are awful. And I really <laughs> admire that you had brought this up that like, yeah. there was there was this kind of scrutiny and yeah. you wanted to draw attention to it. So if you could talk yeah. about that for totally, a second. Totally, totally. Yeah, I was, I remember that day. Um, so like the video had just came out like a few days prior and I was like so excited because first of all, that was the first time I ever like produced or did anything on camera. So it was a really stressful day for me, honestly, but it was really fun and it was really rewarding and I'm so happy that I did it. Um, but so <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm so, I'm so happy with the way it turned out. It was like my true authentic self in my house and my little like safe haven and just, just showing cool stuff with this plugin and, um, you know, really harmless, really inspiring to me. Um, but, you know, I got a text from my friend um, and was like, just so you know, like, I'm sticking up for you, like, from all, like, the, you know, the hate on your videos. I was like, I was like, oh, my God, I haven't even looked. Like, what are they saying? <laughs> so I go back and I start looking through these comments and I'm just like, I literally started crying, to be honest, the first time, for the first time I saw it. Because, like, I've never been under such, like, a, what, like, public, like, forum like that and putting right. myself out there in that way. Um, it was the first time I had experienced some like real, like just like hate. And, um, and I know you're not supposed to feed into it. I know you're sp not supposed to answer to it. And I didn't answer to that. I took screenshots of like the horrible comments that I saw and I posted it and I was just like, this is what happens still to this day in the music industry. And this is why right. females are still scared to get in the producer chair. And this is still like the opinion that that men like put on us. And this is why like girls are scared to do it. And, and that's, it's, it's not right. It's not true. Like females right. are capable of anything technical. And, and I think that's where it was coming from a place. They were just like, you know, whatever, like annoyed at the fact that a female was teaching them something technical. Who cares? Yeah. Like it's whatever. So, it, but I'm glad that I brought more attention to it because now I feel like there's a shift, like even with Splice doing more female initiative um, projects and, and putting like having Nova here and like having some female badass you know, producers just like running shit and and showing other females that they're fully capable because I'm a really good vocal producer. Do you want to know why? Because I sing. Right. <laughs> like a lot of the guys in the engineer seat don't know how to sing. So what I'm sorry, like I understand they can learn and they're they're there's amazing engineers and vocal producers that don't sing, but why wouldn't you want to have somebody there coaching somebody? that like actually has, is trained in that. Of course. So that's where I'm coming from with that. And on that, yeah, on that note, there is this hostility that like female producers face online that like totally. isn't addressed 
properly yeah. isn't talked about enough. Yes. So I really admired that you like had spoken out about it and continue, and continue online yeah. to like address, I guess Thank we're getting <laughs> I actually yeah. hesitated about posting it because I was like, I was thinking about Jen. I was like, oh my God, is Jen going to like, like message me? Like, should I? Because it was a little feisty. I might, like, whatever. Uh, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't very happy about it, um, rightfully so. I mean, I worked my ass off to be able to, to be in the position I'm in. Like, this, is, did, this did not come easy. Yeah. Like, I was relentless in making this happen. I'm still going. I, I mean, me and my boyfriend are making 10-plus records a week, you know? Amazing. That's a lot. And we work really hard. So to, to see those comments, I knew that there was no truth to it. They had, they had no idea what they were talking about. But still, it's just like people need to know, like, this isn't something that I, I'm, not, I'm like a pretty face and just like sitting there like, eh. Like, no, I've actually have been doing this for years. Yeah. And it's a, I find it a really powerful thing, too. And you had mentioned that so many people reach out yeah. about your advice columns just in the yeah. sense of, like, being that kind of mentor to this next generation. I, yeah, I actually am a mentor to a lot of girls right now. I'm developing, mm. like, like, 10 girls right now. Like, you, and that's a lot of work. Um, I'm just kind of, like, giving them opportunities. I'm getting a lot of them played. D, you know, DJ placements, um, helping like source my contacts that I've built. You know, no one did this for me, by the way. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm freely doing this for people that I believe in because I feel like there needs to be more of that. Of course. Um, you know, if I had somebody that, that was helping me in the ways that I'm helping them, I probably would be even further along than I am now. But I feel like I went through what I went through to be able to be a, a guide and a light to people that really do need it. I have, you know, I'll, I'll, re, I'll write and record with my girlfriends that, that are trying to, like, build their careers, and I'll literally sit them in the other studio, and I'll be like, this is how you comp. So comp your own vocal. Because I'm not going to sit there and do everything for you. Right. I need to teach you how to be self-sufficient. I need to... I'm lending people my equipment. You know, I've we've me and Reed have spent thousands of dollars to to get the the best studio, and now we're handing out some of like the other things that we don't use anymore. And like, because I want to build a community around that type of energy. So, I yeah, mentorship is like mm -hmm. it's so important, mm -hmm. and I it's it's an incredible thing, like you said that like there was so much of your resilience yeah. throughout your career has been kind of like this self, like this, obviously there's people that help, there's other people oh, in your yeah. life, but this oh, kind yeah. of self-reliance and this like yep. keeping yourself going. Yep. If, if there was one piece of advice that you really, or like thing that kept, like you kept thinking as you kept going, do you think you would be able to say what it was? Yeah, I mean... I, when I first moved out to LA, my manager was uh, managing this guy, PJ Bianco at the time, and he had founded Jonas Brothers and has still doing incredible stuff. And when I first moved out here, I met with him and he said, you know, I, of course I wanted to work with him, but it do doesn't work like that. You know, I have to yeah. build my story. He said, you have to build your story. You have to build something unique to say and like, and, and really figure out who you are. And that's when, you know, everything's gonna, the magic's gonna start happening. So I would always think about that. I'm like, okay, I gotta build my story. What, what, what is it that I wanna say? What, what do I wanna portray and put out into the universe? So here I am, now I'm doing it. So. And what do you most often tell people who maybe you're mentoring? Um, like who I am or like what's in, I mean story? in the sense of like or what do I tell people to get them to keep going to not give up well um I say that you need to obviously build a thick skin um you have to be prepared for rejection because that's the biggest thing I, I, especially it's hard for anybody but I feel like especially for females it's hard to be rejected but if you can't handle rejection and, and you can't look, you have to look at rejection as being part of the creative process. You can't look at it, at it as a roadblock. You have to work with it. 
and you have to use it to your advantage. And, and that's honestly like the biggest thing, like figure, figure out how to like deal with rejection and learn how to love yourself. Because when you love yourself, that's when you are able to put that true, genuine energy into your own art. And that's when it's going to resonate with people because they feel it, that it's coming from a place of a good place, you know? And the second I really started loving myself, started getting healthy, started doing all of these things that kind of spiraled, that's when I ended up here. So. Hear that, everyone? Yeah. Love yourselves. <laughs> so on that note, we'd like to open the floor to questions. Yeah. So. Anybody? Right over there. How many positive men in your encounter are you doing? Awesome. Oh. Hey, what up? <laughs> um, no, but just thanks so much for, for sharing your story Thank and you. um, yeah. your perspective. And I think the roadblocks and the kind of the pitfalls are just as important as the successes. So thanks 100%. for that. Um, yeah. I'm curious as somebody who hasn't, uh, who's considering putting together a vocal pack, I'm curious yeah. if you have any kind of like tips and tricks for people who are endeavoring on that because it can feel really intimidating even if yeah. you have experience in songwriting. So I'm just curious if you have totally. any Totally. Yeah, I mean, I think my biggest like um, tip for that would be to really hone in on what the um, consumer needs. Um, you know, a lot of people, there's, you know, a million plus subscribers to Splice. Um, think about you know, there's not a million producers that are, like, killing it. These are, like, people that are, like, beginning that are in all different stages of their career. So they need, like, legit vocals with legit lyrics with, con like, more substance than just, like, an ooh and an ah. You have to, like, give them something to work with. And, and it has to be high quality because you can't make... If it doesn't sound good from the start, it's going to be really difficult for the producer to work with and make it sound good themselves, and that can cause even more, like, frustration for them and, you know, that, if that makes sense. But, yeah, so, like, high quality. Make sure you're giving them what they need in terms of substance in a, in a sample. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello? Oh, there we go. Um, so I'm just curious. I do a ton of vocal processing, and just what you said about um, not being able to sing, it's so true. I'd never thought of it that way. I've never sung in my life, and I don't know anything. I don't, like, I can't sing. So I really Take some lessons. That. Yeah, I definitely need to. But I'm more curious in terms of when you're showing people, because I feel like I'm trying to do the same thing. I work with a ton of rappers, and I'm, like, really trying to get them to comp their own vocals. Like, they need to learn how to do that. Yeah. It's so important. Yeah. So I'm just curious, what are you – kind of showing to these people who are like not really ready for the full right, engineering that. breakdown. Right. Yeah, um, well, first of all, I work out of Pro Tools and because I feel like it's the easiest um, DAW for vocal um, editing. Um, so I will basically, as, as, I, as I go, as I record, I'm kind of like giving, like showing them what I'm doing and just so they can get familiar with it. And because that, that helps a lot. Like I sat in so many sessions in my, in my life and just by watching someone do something, I learned so much. But um, I'll, I'll just kind of sit them down with the session and I'm literally just showing them like basic, basic stuff because that's, 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 where, that's where I started. Like, to be honest, I don't even really mix my own vocals. I'm familiar with mixing and plugins and things like that, but that's not where my strengths lie. My strengths lie um, in getting a good performance out of somebody and editing and comping and tuning. So that's like where I focus. So I would just start with, you know, bare minimum, like not too much thought, comping. Maybe the next session you guys do, you'll show them how to do fades and editing. And then the next session, you'll add more to it. Just start simple. Yeah. Yeah, too. So, uh, first of all, I just want to acknowledge the incredible journey that you've been on and oh, and uh, the amount of work that you've put in. It sounds like you've worked your ass off and Thanks. and uh, you really deserve all the success that that you're living right now. So, Thank you. I want to acknowledge that. Thank you so much. And um, admittedly, it breaks my heart to hear the stories of people lashing out at you and, and um, 
I know that that it's something that a lot of women in the music industry experience. I've yeah. heard that echoed from so many female voices. Yeah. And so my question is, is like it fucking pisses me off, yeah, to be saying. honest. <laughs> and um, we're gonna change that. Yeah, yeah. So my question is, is like as a male-bodied person, yeah. what's the best way I can show up for you and other women in the music industry uh, when this comes up? Question. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think it's really important how you communicate with females. Um, make sure you're, one, not creepy. <laughs> um, like, when when I want to go do a session with somebody, like, I don't want to feel like I'm, like, the, like, it's like a questionable, like, you know, thing here. I want to know that I'm there for business, and that's business only. And if I get any ounce of like creepiness or inappropriateness, like I check out completely. And, and I am, but a lot of females, like in, I, when I first started, like I've gone through all of that. I've been sexually assaulted. I've gone through all of that with, with people I worked with. So for me, it's, it's really important to, especially young, naive girls, like make, Make them feel comfortable. You never want to touch them. You never want to like say anything that's that could be suggested in that way. You want to empower them. You want to give them opportunity. Why don't you make them feel like they're an equal collaborator? And just by just by saying simple things like love that idea, like let's try and work it. If you, even if you don't like, let's like try and rework it in this way. Like, do you want to try like like tracking the singer? Like, just like. Having, having them being involved more and encouraging them to be involved if they seem like they're a little bit, like, shy about it. Um, and if you ever see any guy, like, say something weird or do anything towards a woman, step in because a lot of females don't feel like they can. We're too, sometimes too scared to say anything because we're worrying about our careers. So it's much better and it's much more, like, a much more empowering situation if you do see something happen, step in right away. So, yeah. I think we can take one more right here. I think what Reed and you put together with the boards you have in your house about the goals that you're trying to set, it's yeah. something really cool and something that I've done because you do it. And I thought it'd be useful for people to hear yeah. about the goals from last year and what <sighs> you were able to do and then moving forward. Yeah. Okay. This is pretty wild, guys. So, um, so yeah, we got a whiteboard a year ago and um, we decided to write everything we wanted to accomplish. I wrote that I wanted to get a Sony C800 microphone. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wanted to have an indoor outdoor studio um, in Topanga Canyon. I wrote down that I wanted to, um, you know, j those are just like a few, a few options. I wrote down way more. But I, we started working with Cruella like the first month of January last year. And lo and behold, they have an extra Sony C800 laying around. <laughs> <laughs> $10,000 microphone they're not using. Now we, now, now they gave it to us to use for free. Um, and we, our lives have changed because of that microphone. Um, that was the first thing that we put on our board and we got it. Second thing was that studio. And literally um, we were still, me and Reed were in this like cramped one bedroom apartment in Sherman Oaks. Jen saw it. We did our, our first video there. And, um, you know, I I've had like, I thought maybe I was like dreaming too big. I was like, I want this like villa with like a hot tub and and lasers and um, <laughs> I don't know a bunch of things. Um, and for 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 Reed's birthday that February, I took him to an Airbnb called the Pirates of the Caribbean Getaway in Topanga Canyon, and um, it was this treehouse um, that this guy built. And at night, everything lit up with lasers. And me and Reed looked at each other and we we're like. We need to move to Topanga. <laughs> um, literally, like a like a month later, we um, something happens with the, you know with our living situation, and we found a laser jungle studio in Topanga Canyon, and we are running our studio out of there, and we're working with like a list artists, and um, literally everything that we that we wanted came true. So. So do not underestimate the power of writing down what you want in your life and, and really envisioning it, no matter how big or ridiculous it sounds. 
<laughs> and she saw it. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I, I would honestly, I would love for everybody here to like come through our studio and just to see it. It's, it's unbelievable. Guys, give it up for Kara. Thank you so much. <laughs>